We've only got 14 days until Eve is launched. In this countdown video, before we view another clip from the course, I want to consider a great advantage that Eve has over classroom-based study, and that is we actually go on-site to show real installation work. Now this week we're filming a couple of installs, so we've assembled this lovely range of kit in readiness. Now for one of the installs, we're going to replace an older downstream disc board with a domestic, in a domestic workshop with this new one from Schneider Electric, which will feed one of their charging points. And this installation will be converted to TT using some lovely kit from Dane. Now another install will show some retrofitting options in a commercial installation. Both of these installs we're going to provide with SPDs too. One of the mistakes people make with a special installation or location included in part 7 of the regs is to assume that if something isn't mentioned then it doesn't have to be considered by a designer. If you look at section 722 in amendment 1, there's no mention of protection against transient overvoltages for EV charging at all. Well, does this mean we can ignore the requirements of section 443 of the regs? Well, no, of course not. We have to remember that the requirements in part 7 only supplement or modify the rest of the regs where there are specific hazards due to the nature of the special installation or location. The general requirements of the regs, therefore, will apply unless modified. To decide whether SPDs should be installed or not, we turn to section 443. In particular, it's regulation 443.4 that we need to consider, which lists several scenarios where surge protection must be provided. From this, we can determine immediately that any EV charging point serving the public must have surge protection. But what about other charging points for use at home or work? In this case, we're looking at the calculated risk assessment, which can be a challenge. The real dilemma comes with the line in the regs that says, if the risk assessment is not performed, the electrical installation shall be provided with protection against transient overvoltages, except for single dwelling units where the total value of the installation and equipment therein does not justify such protection. So what is the value of equipment where you or your client would decide that it's not worth spending a couple of hundred pounds installing SPDs. That's probably a lot lower than the cost of an electric car. Now we discuss all this much more in detail in EVE. If you're looking to improve your knowledge of EV installation, book a place today. Use code EARLY1 during checkout. You can get the early bird price of only £99 plus VAT. Plus you can win the Matrell MFT in our prize draw. To see the sort of thing you'll get, Let's spin the Take a Peek randomizer and look at another clip from Eve. Electrical installation work within hazardous areas, such as petrol filling stations, needs specialist knowledge. If you intend to do it, you should be trained and qualified with the Petrol Retail Forecourt Contractors Passport Safety Scheme. This will extend your knowledge from the basics of BS7671 to include the practices outlined in the design construction, modification, maintenance and commissioning of filling stations, jointly published by APEA and the Energy Institute, and known as the Blue Book. BS EN 60079 may also have to be referenced. For this module, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the key installation points regarding the electrical installation. The charging equipment must be positioned so that even at full extension of the connecting cable, the equipment and vehicle connected to it is outside the hazardous zone. Only tethered leads can be used in these installations. Generally, most filling stations will have only one electrical supply, which is at least partly TT, as PME is generally not permitted in the hazardous area of the forecourt. So where a separate utility supply company provides EV charging equipment, it should form part of a TT system which must be connected to the filling station's TT earthing system. It's not acceptable for the EV charging installation to be connected to an earthing system separate from that of the filling station. The supply to the EV charging equipment must be interlocked with the petrol filling station main switch, sometimes referred to as the PFS main switch. Technology.